Howdy folks and welcome to The Daily Coin. My name is Rory and today is Wednesday, May the 10th, 2017. And I have the very distinct honor and great pleasure of welcoming back to the show the founder of Gold Money, Mr. James Turk. James, welcome back. Thanks, Rory. It's always great to be with you. Well, I'm glad you're here. And I wanted to start, uh, James, with this relentless beatdown of silver that has taken place over the last three plus weeks now of trading days. And what are your thoughts on what's happening there? Yeah, you know, a couple of things. You know, first of all, uh, based on the COMEX close, as of last night, silver was down 11 days in a row. And if my math is correct, uh, 14 of the last 15, which is really sort of unprecedented. You know, we've seen down just like this before in the in the past. Um, this is probably as bad as it as it gets uh, in terms of the persistence at which it continues to drop. But again, because you know we've seen these in the past, you sort of become immune to them. Or maybe I should describe it like you know, if you're stung by a bee 50, 50 times, the fifty-first time doesn't hurt that much, <laughs> uh, and that's what it sort of feels like to me. But you know, I'm in this for the long haul, Rory, and I don't really worry too much about the day-to-day -day swings. Um, my mantra has always been, you know, accumulate gold and silver. Um, and in the long run, you're going to be very, very happy doing that. And, and that's proven to be good advice. It's just a question of when you finally pull the trigger and start doing that accumulation and sticking to the plan. But it is a good plan and it does work out in the long run. I would agree wholeheartedly with that. I mean, over the past uh, five or six years with all of the beatdowns that gold and silver have suffered, I've been able to bring my dollar cost average down because I continue to acquire. And just like right now with this beatdown that we're going through, doing the exact same thing. And what it does brings my dollar cost average down. Yeah, that's really a key concept, dollar cost averaging. Because what you're really doing is you're saving money uh, and you're just accumulating money. And when I mean money, I mean precious metals, because that's the money in the true sense of the word. Uh, you're accumulating precious metals on an average basis that over time is going to work out very, very favorably for you. Exactly. And it has so far for me. So I uh, want to look at gold. And as we've all known for the past decade, I mean, it's moving from west to east. And China, Russia, and India seem to be increasing their acquisitions, with China moving over 555 tons of gold through the Shanghai Gold Exchange in the first quarter of this year, and Russia acquiring just under 22 tons on average each of the first three months of this year, and India blowing it out as well. The Indian scheme is not working. What do you make of these massive acquisitions of gold for these nations? Yeah, they're doing uh, um, the right thing. You know, they're exiting paper money and they're going into real money. And you see these flows in terms of, you know, what I'm looking at in the market. There's this concept in uh, com commodities called backwardation. Yes. Um, what it means is the spot price is higher than some future price. Now, gold is normally in what's called contango. The spot price is always less than the future price because gold is money. And money in the, expense in the future is always more expensive than money today when you add in the interest rate factor. Uh, but right now, gold is trading in backwardation, as is silver. And what that's showing is that there's an unusual demand uh, for the actual physical met metal rather than some promises to pay metal in the future. And normally when you see this kind of aberration in the market, and it is indeed an aberration because it's not a normal condition, it, you, you, it tends to be a signal that you're at or very, very close to the bottom. You know, so, so given the, the, the pummeling, uh, both uh, gold and silver have taken over the past few weeks, um, it feels like a bottom. But, you know, there's also another thing to keep in mind, Rory. Uh, it may not feel like it today, but if you look at the uh, charts, gold is actually in an uptrend. The low in December of uh, 15 was the low of the correction that began back in 2011. The December 16 low was above the low a year earlier. And today we're higher than where we were in December of 16. So gold's actually up a little bit on the year. It just doesn't feel that way because of what's happened over the last few weeks. But when it comes to gold, you have to take that big picture viewpoint. 
Yes, and we actually discussed that just a couple of days ago on our Shadow of Truth program. As I'm, I'm sure you're aware, uh, James, the BRICS nations have agreed to open up two new gold markets, one in Moscow and the other in Beijing, for the specific purpose of helping the other BRICS nations to increase their gold acquisitions. The One Belt, One, one Road project has already made moves toward having gold as trade along the route. And I have a couple of questions re okay. around this. And in your opinion, will this usher in a gold-backed currency or some type of gold note that requires gold to be held in the BRICS Development Bank or the AIIB? You know, that's really a good question. It's one that I've been thinking a lot about. Um, my my answer is, is that the uh, all of the countries are going to continue to play with fiat currencies to the extent that they continue to get away with it. But eventually, when the whole fiat currency system collapses, which is ultimately where we're headed, because as Voltaire said, paper money always returns to its intrinsic value, which is zero. Um, when the paper currency, fiat currency system collapses, uh, gold will emerge. But I don't know if it's going to emerge where gold itself just starts circulating as currency. That's my expectation. Uh, rather than just some kind of representation, a certificate. Um, because when the fiat currency, currency system collapses, the credibility of governments to maintain any kind of a monetary policy or monetary standard will be so discredited that who would want to have a certificate that's you know stamped as good by a government after they've been stamping good all of the fiat currency they're supposedly you know um, that they're creating and supposedly supposed to be um, a strong money. So I, I you know I, I don't think. Um, it, we'll see how it all unfolds, but my guess is that gold itself is going to start circulating as currency, either physically, hand to hand, or digital, digitally, um, you know, online, you know, like we, we do in gold money, and and I think is technically the the next advancement in the form of currency. I would I agree with that. I mean, with the blockchain, and, and we're going to get to that in just a minute. Uh, the second part of, of my question regarding this umbrella that I just unfolded is now that we have learned that China's internal gold production is down about 10% for the first quarter of this year and just discuss these new markets, new customers, gold literally pouring into the east. Where, uh, James, is all this gold going to come from to support all of this new demand? Yeah, you know, there's a lot of gold around in the Earth's crust, but it's very hard to discover and even harder to actually build a mine and make that mine economic. So what we're going to see is ultimately higher gold price, which will encourage exploration and mining. But, you know, if, and if you look at this over the long run again, the above ground stock of gold, you know, all of the gold that's been mined throughout history, it's still existing the above ground stock because it doesn't get destroyed. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't burn up. It doesn't melt. It doesn't uh, rot or anything like that. It still exists in that above ground stock, which I call the, the you know, the gold stock uh, or, you know, it's, it's, it's like we talk about M1, M2 and three on the dollar. The above ground gold stock is gold's M3. It grows by about one and three quarters percent per annum. Year after year after year. Some years it's 1.6 percent. You know, some years it's maybe two percent, but it, it averages out about 1.75 percent per annum. And it's sort of fortuitous that that happens that way because that's approximately equal to world population growth and new wealth creation. So over long periods of time, gold has this consistency. So I'm not too worried about the gold appearing, uh, Rory, because it will happen. In you know my seven decades on this planet, uh, I've seen what the old timers would have uh, um, walked over in the 1970s as being dirt in Nevada and as now major mines. The technology always changes things. And there will be technology changing things in the future that will enable gold to continue to be mined and mined profitably because the gold price will continue to reflect the investment of capital and labor uh, to create money out of the earth rather than create, as central banks do, money out of thin air. I like it. 
I, I, I agree. I think that the gold has to go much higher from where it currently is in order to sort of stabilize these markets that are coming online. Plus the fact that I personally believe that China or Russia or a combination of the two are going to introduce gold as currency and gold back into the monetary system. And when that happens, then everything is going to change and it, and it won't go back, at least in our lifetime anyway. So that's the way that I see it. And, and I want to kind of look at the United States as far as gold is concerned. As you're well aware, there, Texas and Utah and I believe New Mexico have all passed laws now that state that gold and silver are money and can be used as money in those states. And how do you see that changing here at in the United States over the course of the next decade? I mean, will there be more states that come online? Do you think that what's happening in the East that we just discussed is going to influence that or override it? Or how do you see it playing out? You know, it's really important. Uh, uh, There's a really important question because it reflects not just the issue of money, but it reflects the relationship of the political relationship between what is the authority of the federal government and what is the authority of each of the individual 50 states. Uh, you know, when, what the framers created was basically a common market with a common currency, gold and silver, and a common defense. Um, and it it all started changing um, about a hundred years or so ago, uh, maybe even a little bit before that, uh, where the federal government started assuming powers that weren't specifically one of the seventeen powers designated for it in the Constitution, and it's reached a stage now where the states are basically saying, "Hey, enough is enough. We want these powers back at the state level." And one of those powers, of course, is the issues related to money. You know, the federal government is given in the Constitution the power to coin money. It's not given the power to print money, uh, and it's abusing that power. And the states recognize that the monetary power is being abused, just like a lot of the other powers are being abused by the federal government. So I think we're going to see a lot of political pushback uh, by the states uh, in the years ahead, which has implications for you know the monetary uh, system that the U.S. Is, is, is going to be operating. And in fact, I was just reading an article that uh, Texas was the 11th state to call for a constitutional convention under the, uh, I think it's Article 6 or 7 of the Constitution, that allows states to call a constitutional invest- convention to add amendments to the Constitution. What Texas is looking for is to control, you know, the uh, federal, the level of federal debt, and the way the federal government spends money. I like it. I mean, I think it's thirty-five states that have to get on board. So, if the if my number is right, then they're about a third of the way there, which is good. It's very yeah. That's positive. that's your number is right. Uh, uh, all right, something that's near and dear to your heart, Mister Turk, and that is gold money. And gold money is your company and your product. The CME, back on April the 11th, announced that they will be manipulating the gold retail market, utilizing the Royal Mint, working through a blockchain platform. Explain to people how gold money is not only a superior product, but why people should avoid anything to do with the CME. Okay. Well, first of all, it's my company in the sense that I'm the founder of it. I'm not the owner of it. We've got a lot of, we're a publicly traded company on the Toronto Stock Exchange, and we've got a lot of, a lot of owners. Uh, and obviously, my family is an owner of it as well. Um, but first of all, what the blockchain is, it's a fancy name for a term called, uh, for what in effect is distributed ledgers. You know, when you have accounting, you have a ledger. Yes. And rather than have a central ledger, uh, blockchain is a distributed ledger in that computers around the world have that same ledger on their computer now the blockchain itself i think is a important technological advancement and we're going to see a lot more of that in the future the question is is whether we're going to see it with regard to currency Uh, we have the cryptocurrencies like bitcoin and some of the others using this blockchain technology Um, but uh, you know is that is the future of blockchain with currencies or is the 
uh, future with other things, you know, distributed databases, uh, maybe security trading and things like that. That will that will determine itself. But the point is, is that when you own physical silver, and this is getting at the heart of your question, or physical gold, um, and you want to buy physical silver or physical gold, there are only two ways to do that. You buy it and you store it for yourself, or you buy it and you have someone store it for you professionally. And when you're storing it professionally, what you want to make certain is that the metal is insured, uh, it's diversified by having it in different vaults if possible around uh, the world, you know, maybe even as a maybe somewhere you live, but also some outside the country where you live, again, for diversification reasons. Uh, you have regular audits, uh, you know, basically the things we do in gold money to provide, you know, our customers with the assurances of integrity that their metal is there. It's uh, scanned with um, technology to make sure that the gold bars don't have any foreign material in them and they're, and they're pure gold bars. Uh, basically what's stamped on the surface is what's in the bar itself. Um, and, you know, a lot of these other schemes that are coming up, they rest on the names of the institutions rather than the actual governance procedures that are being employed. So it'll be interesting to see how this all develops. But, you know, keep in mind when you're buying gold or silver, you want to make certain that you're buying physical gold and physical silver and they're, they're safe. Now, when I can, if I open up a, a gold money account, I would be able to deposit any amount of fiat currency into that account to be able to convert it to gold. Is that right? I mean, if, yeah. if I wanted to deposit, you know, $20 a week or $20 a month or $100, whatever the amount is, then that's just going to be converted into physical gold. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. And you can set it up in such a way that you can just have, you know, at the end of the month, uh, whatever you want to pursue your dollar cost averaging program and whatever fits within your family budget, you can just set it up with gold money to have, you know, 20, $20, dollars, hundred dollars, you know, whatever amount you want automatically deducted from your checking account and used to, to purchase, you know, gold or silver, platinum or palladium on that particular day. Okay. So it's a very easy way to save uh, to save. It doesn't make sense to save dollars anymore because you're not earning any interest and the dollar's constantly losing purchasing power because of erosion. And then you have all of the associated counterparty risk issues is, you know, is my bank safe? Uh, you know, is the, the government going to make good on uh, FDIC insurance, et cetera? When you, you don't have those worries when you own physical gold or physical silver. Yeah. I, I wish that my wife could hear you say that because I tell her that all the time because she refuses to take money out of the bank, even though I point out to her that they're, they're literally paying us or they're affording us pennies on the, in, the amount of money that we have in this bank with all of these associated risks that you just went through. I mean, and those risks are very real in my opinion. I mean, they're, it's terrifying to be yeah, we saw it in the bank. We saw those risks in 2008, exactly. and you know, people, people are seeing that risk now in Canada. There's this company called Home Capital, which has been having a, a, a big um, uh, bank run. People are pulling money out because the bank you know, has a, a bad loan book, which means that its capital base is basically eroded. So, yeah, you know, banks come with problems. And if you look at monetary history, it's repeated crises over time. Uh, and those repeated financial monetary crises, more often than not, start because of bank failures, just like 2008. You know, it started with Northern Rock in the UK, it moved to Bear Stearns in the US, and you know, by the time September of 2008 rolled around, um, Lehman Brothers collapsed, and that's when it really started falling apart. Not to mention all of the savings and loans and other banks that are going bankrupt every every week of the year. Just like the one that just went bankrupt in Louisiana about a week to 10 days ago. And they had a, a billion dollars worth of assets. I mean, wow. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's very real. I mean, like I said, I find it terrifying to be associated with a bank for anything other than what they were originally designed for. And that's a utility to be able to help me and the community to transfer uh, currency or money 
from my personal life to where I need it to be. And that's it. That's their sole purpose. Yeah, it's, you know, to make payments. That's right. you know one of their functions, and uh, what they've done though over the over the years is they've combined the function of making loans with the function of making payments, and that's what's what's created these uh, this instability in the banking system. We should go back to what there was in historic times, which was you had banks of commerce, which made the payments, and then you had banks of credit, which made the loans. But the two were separate and distinct; they were only merged a hundred. Well, about 180 years ago, um, and that's when all of the instability really started arising. Yep, that's exactly it. And James, I want to thank you for all your time. And we've been speaking with legendary gold bug and one of the best precious metals analysts on the planet. He's an author, he's an entrepreneur, and as I mentioned, founder of Gold Money, Mr. James Turk. James, thank you for all your time today. Thank you, Rory. We will talk with you soon. Great. That'd be great.